Is the question is the question what do you do with a really deep cut? So no, you have a decubitus ulcer, and a lot of times the decubitus ulcer goes to bone. In the back. I'm sorry, I don't yeah. know what a cubit of cell sore is. Oh, a bed sore. Oh, okay, I know. I thought you were talking about a new kind of drink. I just didn't know. I'm sorry, bed sores. Bed sores, got you. Deep bone, at what point would you not use concrete if it goes to bone? Hey, if it's an open lesion, then it's open field for using comfrey. I'm just talking about a puncture wound that is, has closure at the skin level. So uh, comfrey works really well for bed sores, <laughs> and and uh, so do, so does Epsom salts, and so you can start with the with the Epsom salt therapy. In this case, you're using a fomentation or a compress, and you're you're using a, a little washcloth like this, and a a bowl of hot Epsom salt water and a bowl of cold, and you dip in the hot Epsom salt, bring it out, put it on the on the bed sore. Let it go for a little while. Take it off. Put your cold one on there, and one, and then the other. So you've got the expansion contraction going on. Then you dry off the lesion, and you put your comfrey poultice on, and that can be held on for like as long as it's convenient, or it can even be left on overnight, and then showered off in the morning. So, um, or if it's someone who's bedridden, then obviously you'd have to like wipe it off and and wash it carefully. And then you leave it open to the air. So this is very, very important, and it's very uh, contra-Western uh, pharmaceutical type uh, allopathic medicine. Any of these lesions after the after the um, active treatment phase, then you leave them open to the air, and then they'll tend to 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 um, glaze over, and you see this healthy tissue tissue reparation on the edges of the lesion, and it starts to move in, and you can just watch it happen. So, um, so yeah, I never keep a cut or a burn covered. Sorry, I know some of you probably do, but I just never do. And I've healed many, many of them, and never seen a problem. Question over here. The question is, do the leaf and the root have the same properties? And the answer is, Yes, very much so. They, in fact, when we when you make the poultice, oftentimes I use the root and the leaf together. Another question: Why not get the dry roots to boil? Would that be different than the fresh roots? Very good question. The question is: Can one use the dried roots and then make a poultice out of that? And yes, you can. the The recipe for doing that is in my book, Making Plant Medicine Under Poultices. And so, you know, you would follow that procedure. Uh, usually, 100 grams of dried and ground uh, comfrey root can be re-wetted re, uh, with, well, you can use uh, hot water. It's OK. You can use hot water until you get a paste. And then you put that on a cloth. And then you put the cloth on the wound. So yeah, you can, you can use the dried root. Very good uh, point. How long are you leaving the cold stock for? How long does one leave the poultice on for? Uh, at the minimum, 20 minutes. The best overnight, and then shower off in the in the morning. It has to do with the patience factor, and then also uh, if you if it's convenient, you can put on the poultice, and then you can cover with a, a wrapping bandage, and you can wear that around, and it can do its work while you're also infected. But I found that it works a lot better to put on the poultice, lie down on your bed. Get your guitar, sing Hare Krishna, look at the ceiling, and wait for the bolts to do its work. Because you have this, this sort of like, you know, Vedic influence that occurs. <laughs> Next question, yes? I have, I have been tempted to use uh, a comfort poultice on a diabetic ulcer, and I have not, I've, I've, I've steered away from that, and I just want to know what you're doing. Uh, her question is do you, do you use comfrey therapy on a diabetic ulcer? I have no idea why anyone would recommend not to. I do know that that information is out there. I think it's fear-based. There's a lot of fear around comfrey. That's whenever anything is really, really good, then the powers that be create fear around it. And so the, the trick is to never react out of fear. 
Instead, react out of love. If you can get that down, then you've arrived. <laughs> yes, you can use it on a diabetic ulcer. I mean, people lose their limbs because of diabetic ulcers. All they need to know is a simple little rough plant known as symphytum. That's all they need to know. Question? I have used uh, plantain, Octago Major, um, for drawing when there's a problem. Uh, is that something that you could use uh, for the deep puncture? You could, you could do the, the, question, the point is that plantain has been used to draw out, and would that be something that you could use on a deep puncture wound? I think that plantain also has a pretty strong healing influence. I mean, it has those tannins, but it also has the mucilage that helps uh, helps to that helps to heal. So instead, I would choose yarrow. I would use a yarrow poultice. Yarrow is very a very good poulticing agent for deep wounds. The doctrine of signatures is that you know it has a deeply divided leaf. It looks like deep cuts. So you use fresh yarrow for uh, for a deep cut or for a puncture wound, and then uh, also use the Epsom salt therapy. And then after after all mm, all concern about you know traps toxins is over, then you can use your 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 um, your mucilaginous poultice. So that could be it could be comfrey or it could be plantain. Certainly, plantain is a great poulticing agent. Yeah, I have seen it work on, on, a, on a cyst that was closed. It, it actually opened it up and it drained and then it healed it. Closed. Uh, and also on a, a skin cancer on this lady's arm, she, she poulticed it with plantain and it worked for that. But plantain, so the point is for the amazing. purpose of the recording, the plantain is uh, purportedly good for uh, opening up a closed lesion and uh, helping drain toxicity and then also uh, potentially uh, uh, good for treating a, a cancerous lesion. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead with my uh, demonstration and we'll take more questions later. So uh, how to make, uh, can I have a volunteer that's good at cutting without cutting themselves? <laughs> Just basically uh, grab the pieces like this and cut into one inch slices. Come on around back this way. Just one. You can you can uh, wait to the sideline. Wait to the sideline and you get the next turn. <laughs> See, I do work with children a lot, don't I? <laughs> yeah. The point is, the point is that here, take up a bunch of them. We don't, we've only got an hour and a half. Somebody with bigger hands. No, no, you're good. Okay. Like that, and then just cut it right into there. Yeah, the thing about using a blender instead of a rock and a dirty workbench is um, uh, you have to cut up the pieces first. Uh, otherwise, the blades spin around and there's these long pieces of root in there and then you really look like an idiot in front of an audience uh, because it just doesn't suck it down in. Sweetheart, wait a minute. No, no, just, just hold on, hold on. Okay. Here. No. All right. Look. Okay. You don't want to cut towards your thumb. The comfrey pulse is supposed to go on his injured foot. <laughs> hold it so that the the roots are up here above your thumb, and then just cut them all at once. See how easy that was? Okay. You right-handed? Wait a minute. You're left-handed? Mm -hmm. Well, then hold the roots in your right hand and cut with your left hand. So it go above, like that. Oh, I hate to see you guys down. Oh, I hate to see you guys down. Okay, next volunteer. Yeah. <laughs> Someone who's used to chopping vegetables? Yeah, okay, come on. Thank you. I, I love you. I'm going to talk to you later. <laughs> You have deeper problems that comfrey will not cure. We're going to talk about that.
and your bravery is not one of your problems. <laughs> Yes, sir. <laughs> right, application of the poultice. Good question. I think that's going to be, you know, obvious when we when we do our demo. And maybe you can stand up and watch. But basically, what I figured out is you get your tools together beforehand, and what you get is a plate and a cloth. Because you don't want to be trying to like scoop this gluey stuff out and like slap it on yourself. Oh, sorry about that. I'm sure. That <laughs> uh, so yeah, you would you would pour the goo onto your cloth, and then you'd make it as as thick as your as is allowed. Like to a certain extent, the thicker the better, because you just have more of that pulling agent there. And then and then say say this this bag here that that uh, TSA was so interested in. Yeah, you take this bag here and that's your, that's your, uh, can you hold this lesion up? Yes, this is a, this is a lesion. And then you take and you, you um, slide your poultice off like this, right onto it. And then what you've got is you've got the herb down on the skin, you know, and you've got the, um, and you've got a covering so that you don't get that all that slime on your bed sheets, you know, like that. Usually, you know, poultices will work without any covering on the top, but um, sometimes it really makes sense to, uh, they'll, they'll suck better if you cover first with a layer of plastic and then you put like an insulation on it, like towels or something of that nature, or at least just a thin bandage on top of it so that it all stays together. And then after you've got it, and then after you've got it applied, then you can, again, bind it on with some bandages or just some ripped sheets like that. Another question? When you use the leaves, you rub them in your hands, throw them in a the blender. Well, OK. The first poultice that I ever saw you, the question is, when you use leaves, do you rub them in your hands, or what do you do? And the first poultice that I ever saw employed was when I was 16 years old in the jungle of Columbia. That was before long hairs were hung up by their toenails and beaten with, or with Colombian carrots. But um, um, anyway, uh, I, there was a, a, an issue with a, a cut on the man's foot, and it was infected. And the, the uh, one-armed guy, Don Luis Calvo, went into the jungle forest and he came back with one leaf. It was a smooth leaf. And what he did was he put a little piece of lard on that leaf, and then he used the chimney from the lamp, and he worked it back and forth. I don't know how he did that with one hand. <laughs> well, I think it was with the stump, and literally, I think it was with the stump and a hand. He worked it back and forth, and he got it till it was flexible. So you want something that is, you want a leaf that's either ground up or is made flexible by usually by steaming, or in this case by adding uh, oil and then and then heating it up, because it has to suck. Because if you just took a plain leaf and put it on that on that uh, wound, it wouldn't suck. It would just come right back off again. So uh, you want to yeah. Uh, anytime you use leaves, generally you want to um, go ahead and steam them first, and then. You don't steam them until they're cooked gray, you know. You just steam them until they're flexible, and then you lay them, layer them on in layers. So um, a, 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 a leaf poultice that we've used with to good effect is a mullein leaf poultice for treating mastitis. And again, I have to I have to um, remind you that these things are going to work better in the early early stages of infection instead of waiting until things are really, really bad. So um, so the way you do that is you pick mullein leaves, which everybody's got lots of mullein leaves. And so the mullein, mullein is both astringent and it also has uh, saponins in it that uh, have a profound influence on the lymph. And so breast milk and and uh, 
breasts in general are, are lymphatic playgrounds. And thank you so much. Well mm -hmm. done. Yes. Um, <laughs> the the mullein leaves are put into a, a pot of water. You use a screen, you know, like a like a steamer screen in the pot. You actively boil them for like five seven minutes, like that, until they're flexible. Then you take then you take the lid off the pot. You have your patient lying on the bed. She has unbared her breast. This is the fun part. And then <laughs> you take the leaves one at a time and you wrap them around the breast, or both breasts if necessary, and, and you layer them on, and then you put the plastic, and then you put insulating towels. And what this does is it, you, you have the, the pulling uh, action from the, from the uh, leaves that have been rendered flexible by heating. You've got the heat, which is very good for resolving uh, uh, beginning phase breast uh, infection mastitis and then you ha and then you have the active principles from the mullen which is a lymphatic stimulant mullen is a is a lymphatic herb and so then that is going to help move that that stuck infection out of the breast and and then it can be uh, recycled metabolically question So the question is, what? How about the poke oil? And then uh, this would be an adjunct therapy for treating mastitis. Would be to use uh, oil of poke root, which is phytolaca, good old, glad we live in Americana, I guess. Uh, uh, phytolaca Americana, and that is uh, made with the fresh poke root. It's chopped up coarsely like one inch pieces, put in a jar of uh, organic olive oil, cover, cover, yeah, cover the mullein, cover the poke pieces with the oil, and then put that in a, in a bath of water with high sides, like a baking pan in the oven. Uh, if there's a, a 100 degree, 100, 100 to 105 degrees is a really good temperature for digestion of these things overnight, and then pour off the oil, and you're ready to go. So if there's an impending mastitis, you can make oil of poke overnight and use it the next day. So that you would then swab onto the breasts first, um, and then, then after that, you would go ahead with your mullein poultice, and then you're given the old you know, herbal one-two. That's for, that's for herbalists that are really, you know, they really know their stuff. Then you're going to stimulate the lymph. You're going to start start the whole process with the with the uh, poke oil, and then you're going to move into the mullen leaf, or you could even use uh, uh, poke leaves on the breast afterwards. And and then, uh, um, in the words of my uh, uh, one of my African witch doctor teachers, "Quisha Allah, he may quisha," which means it's finished. It's all finished. The infection is gone. One more question. So, so the point that was being made was that you don't want any, you don't want to treat your babies with poke. So, if you're nursing, which is a really good idea, you, you should try to keep the breast as as uh, emptied of milk as possible. Then you want to wash with soap and water before before uh, nuzzling the baby. Then okay, let's let's move ahead into the uh, pulsing aspect. Here we have the cut up comfrey root. When working with a blender, make sure that the blender base is really on. <laughs> Otherwise, you really make a problem. Could somebody go back into this back room and get me some water, just out of the sink? Empty out the dirt first. I mean, they do say dirt first, but in this case, empty out the dirt first. Yes. Uh, we just need a little water to make it to make it uh, vortex. So we're only going to add enough water until it vortexes. What vortexing is when it makes a little volcano in there, and then 
we're gonna, and then that's the end. So go ahead. You can be my pourer, okay? See, we put on the lid, but we leave the opening here. So people can stand up if they can't see very well. And then we turn the blender on and put it on uh, medium blend and start pouring a little water. What is this, a solar blender? <laughs> hey, you shake it down. You use a tool if you need to. Do not stick your fingers in the blender while it's going. going. Now this thing that looks like something that Calvin would play with has bubbled up to the top. It's really slimy. I mean, we're talking major mud slime here. Keep going. Maybe we better hurry before the blender burns out. Okay, that's good. Back in a blender, literally, you can go out to the creek and you can grab two rocks and smash them between the rocks. I confirmed that the blender worked, but I didn't confirm that it worked how well. Or that it actually turns off. <laughs> so uh, now, what you do is you replace the really liquefied portion that's in the bottom with the uh, portion that's above that still has big chunks of comfrey root in it. You want to get all the goodness out. Swirl the blade a little bit. Squeegee the sides. The human hand is really the, the best spatula that ever existed because it can go in lots and lots of different directions. And here we go. Okay, so there's the there's the poultice for the purpose of the Thank you. Do you know why they're called cow's lips? <laughs> you think it's about like cow's lips, don't you? It's not. 
It's because they grow in places where the stuff slips out of the back of the cow, <laughs> which is a lot what this looks like. <laughs> but you're going to love it. You're all about it. Okay, so can you describe to us the, the, the nature of your affliction? Sure. So I was a uh, rock climbing about a week ago and I slid off the rock wall. It wasn't too bad, maybe just five or six feet, but I don't know what happened, but my foot jammed and I immediately knew the weekend was over with and I've been looking around on crutches and tried to go to walking sticks and that was a mistake, so now I'm back on crutches again. It's just kind of swollen, it just hurts and it's kind of annoying um, and painful. So Can you lift both feet for just a second yeah. and show us how much swelling there is? Yeah. Comparative, no, just sit, just stay yeah. sitting. All right. Yeah, so, yeah. Nice feet, by the way. Yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Normal, and this is the swollen one, and it's got some bruising around the I ankle. see the bruising around yeah. the ankle. Uh -huh. yeah. So, yeah, that's at least where the stuck blood is ending up. So, where, you know, and then this is, here's the thing with herbal medicine. You know, you talk to the patient. Yeah, you actually find out a little about them and what the nature of the injury is before you just put your ego right down there. So, so where does it hurt? Uh, mainly on the medial aspect. And the patient is obviously a naturopathic physician. <laughs> Instead of calling it the arch, which is a very level-headed and, and easy term, he's called it the medial <laughs> inferior <laughs> aspect. <laughs> Otherwise known as the arch. <laughs> and so, and so, how about that big bone on the back? Does that hurt? <laughs> A little sensitive there. So we're going to wrap it around there. It's kind of, it almost looks like we're going to go from the bottom of the foot up and around. Which means you have to step in this cow boot. <laughs> okay. So could we have a volunteer that could move all of his materials off to the side so that they don't get all slimy? There we go. In Zanzibar, when I do this, they always give the guy a cigarette. I don't know. I think it's from the old movies where there's like a bullet being extracted or something. But we can't smoke in here, so you're just going to have to. Actually, there's not any pain involved at all. So yeah, if you can stand up and come come around, yeah. Comfrey root, you could get dried comfrey root at the store and use that. You know, you're going to have to buy like a quarter pound per poultice. Um, yeah, you can do that. Picture, I don't mind. Yeah, oh, yeah. And uh, almost everybody's got comfrey. Once you have comfrey, you never don't. It's even better than horseradish.